Um, so we were, um, we had Mr. We had Ken a few minutes ago, and uh, he went over the game with us. Okay. He was actually very, um, very uh, impressed by by your play during several moments of the game. He thought you played you know, very well and saw some moves that he actually missed. Yeah. In one of the variations, he missed rook f5. Yeah. That was one of the, the moves he yes, missed. Yes, after he cannot take on e4 because of rook f5. Exactly. Well, he, he, he thought that maybe that was possible. Then he had to change his idea because he didn't see that move. No. Right. So the, the main position which he thought was the critical moment of the game, he thought it was here uh, where he was thinking of considering taking the draw if you'd have played rook b1 here, <coughs> going back to to c3 and repeating moves for the draw. That was his in principle. He, he was sort of considering going back to a7, yeah. but uh, he would have thought about it, but in principle he was thinking of taking the draw. So he showed me a line, which was quite unbelievable. Uh, after capturing on b7, mm -hmm. which is the move you did, um, that he could catch later on on e4 and taking on f7 wasn't so dangerous. Was that what you thought when you took let's on take b7? A look. Let's go back yeah. a bit. Uh, okay. So I'll, uh, uh, you can I'll just go through here. my thoughts. Okay. Um, you can use yeah, this it was quite an interesting here. game actually. Um, I lost but um, it was fun playing it. and It was very interesting. He showed us a, a, a yeah. load of very interesting variations and lines. So let's just, uh, can we just yeah. go? You can go with, with the slider or great. Yeah, I think this is Okay, let's just let's just start from okay. from the beginning. Okay, great. Begin from the beginning. All the games are in, so. Okay, perfect. So, this line, yeah, knight c6 here, and uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, I I wasn't expecting knight c6. Of course, the main move is to take on c4, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Just back up, and you know you've got stuff like this, which yes. of course everybody knows, and this is played a lot. This is the main line here. Mm -hmm. um, over here, you've got other moves like knight d7. You've got moves like c6. Knight c6 is rare, but it's actually a very interesting line. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not completely sure like what is the right plan here because you don't have so many games. In fact, Hare Krishna played this with black as well very recently. Okay. Uh, and it's um, it's an interesting way to play. So I think, of course, when I played a3 and went into this position i kind of understood that he wants to take on c4 and go for e5 and he wants to go for e5 it's a bit like the Lasca variation in, in the queen in the queen's gambit we were, right we were, we were commenting right and then if i take on e5 i think it should be more or less equal but then yes. that's not my idea to play yes. a3 and and to just uh well, that's what he liked he t he told me um of course exchange on e5 would more or less be equal but she played very ambitiously for the attack with d5 yeah i mean i'm white my last white but in the tournament yes. <laughs> So I uh, I wanted to go for d5 mm -hmm. here, but again, I was trying to evaluate this position because I haven't seen it before and I wasn't sure, but I knew it would be interesting. But yeah, he, he I think he did right. I mean, he didn't just retreat with the knight because if he does that, I can always go, go exactly. for e4. He told us he wanted to keep the knight on c6. So that just he can, can jump to d4, which yeah. makes a lot of sense, right? Seems very logical. Uh, so you want to get your knight to d4. You don't want to go to knight, uh, your knight to e7. And... Um, yeah, here he played rook d8. I went shot castle, which I think is inaccurate, to be honest. Um, I, I have a feeling because the point is that after shot castle, bishop g4, what happened in the game, it was kind of difficult for me to hmm. uh, get out of this. Uh, I had to sort of create this unclear position, which might be, uh, might be fine for black. You know, I was considering moves like queen b3 here. Knight d2 and uh, I'll have to see it's just it's just a very new position so hmm. it's it's just got like a lot of ideas and yeah maybe next time I'll play knight d2 or queen d queen b3 <laughs> you, spe you spent a lot of time as well doing I did try and, and you know that things. was n that's never a good idea because hmm. when the then when you when you end up in a critical moment you don't have yeah, enough time which exactly. is what which is exactly what yeah, happened that's what that's so. what uh, we supposed that had happened the, the lack of time at the end yeah uh, it makes it more difficult to make the correct decisions so here bishop g4 and h3 of course uh, i would be very happy with the position after bishop f3 i mean i i think black should also be hmm. fine but like yeah you, you it, thought you were better here yeah it, black should i he, mean probably we, slightly better for white. we saw a rook ending which was slightly better for you it's maybe like, a draw but yeah it's the kind of pressing. position you're playing for two results hmm. you know which is always a pleasant position to yeah. play uh, so he went bishop h5, which was what I was anticipating. And now e4, I mean, I had to calculate this entire thing, entire variation and sort of evaluate the position at the end. 
g4 because I don't want to go with bishop e2. I think black is just better after taking bishop f3. I don't know what he said about his position, no, but I didn't like it for white. So he much. didn't mention bishop e2. Yeah, because it's of course hmm. not the way I want to play with the. Uh, he thought that the idea with g4 was critical, but so he thought he was okay, but because he had missed the. Uh, the rook f5 uh, idea at yeah. some point. No, to be honest, like I wasn't very sure about the evaluation. I just thought it's an interesting position, hmm. so I went for it. Um, take, take. And now I don't want to play rook d3 because I kind of didn't like this position after bishop e4. Yes. So my point, um, sorry, bishop e4, you take on f3, f4, and I don't know, maybe bishop f3 is possible, but even if you just probably come back, Black should be fine because mm. you've got c6 coming c5 at some point. Um, I didn't like that. So my idea was to go rook f3. And now you have to go queen e5 defending the d4 pawn. And now rook e1. And this is this very is interesting. This is the move that he missed. Well, he saw rook e1, but he, he hadn't realized that you had this. Yeah, rook this f5. is nice. This uh, is the only move because other moves are not good to. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not really winning the bishop in any other move because my rook is attacked. And if I go bishop d3, you just simply take, take my rook. Exactly. That's the move, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. So now he realized things were, at least what he told me, he, the things were becoming very complicated. Yeah, it was after. interesting. And yeah, that was the aim, right? Very double <laughs> So bishop e4 leads to rook f5, which I was, um, I mean, that's the idea. And now I think he has to go c5 here. That's what he told me here. Because mm. he played really quickly and he missed uh, an important point here that if he goes c6, I just go b4. And now it's very difficult for him to defend the d4 mm. pawn. Because you're never going to get c5 on time. Uh, I'm just threatening to go rook d3 and just capture on d4. In fact, I think how he played was probably the best way to go here. It, you have to sort of look for counterplay in That's this position. That's what he said. He said, I, as soon as I saw I was going to lose the d4 pawn, then I thought, well, maybe opening up a bit of counterplay, weak king had to find some something like that, because if not, he's just worn down. Yeah, it's just worse for him. And then I've also got, the thing is, you also have to be careful, because once I go rook d3, I don't know, maybe I, I can't really show, I'm not sure if I can show my ideas with arrows here. Yeah, uh, if you want arrows, you use Yeah, yeah okay, got it. Okay. So rook d3, and then you know, I've also got things like queen d2 and f4. f4. And that's going to be very unpleasant for black. So I think he reacted in the most uh, critical manner, a5. I continue with my plan. And queen d6 here. Uh, I was considering some options. So the point is, I can't go queen b3 because you've got b5. b5. So I don't, uh, I don't have time for that. And uh, queen d2 was also not great because uh, you just go rook a4. Mm -hmm. And the point is that if you take rook d4, now you just, I'm sorry, you simply take on, take on b4. Yeah. You just and simply take on b4. Spin. And uh, yeah, because uh, you take here and d6 now is not working because of c5. c5 and yeah. then I lose my bishop on c4. Mm -hmm. A lot of calculations in this game. Yeah, it was <laughs> because it's, it's that kind of position, you know, it's so concrete yeah. and um, yeah, it, it, it was very interesting. So I, I think I played correctly hmm. here, rook d4, you take on b4 and d6. And now I was sort of happy with my position. I was quite, um, um, yeah, I was uh, feeling quite positive at this moment. I'm threatening bishop f7, that's clear. So just to highlight it for everyone, yep. this is the big threat. And uh, you can't go b5, you can't go c5 because of bishop f7. Uh, what he played is very is, is the best way because if you retreat queen c5 without threatening, uh, he played queen c3, so he's threatening the pawn on h3, then I just simply push my pawn on e5 is, and I go e6 and I'm very happy. You're, you're crushing here. Yeah, I'm just crushing because you never have these ideas because just simply bishop f7. So and also what's important is hmm. that you cannot go b5 because I have e6. This was also really nice hmm. because you just take here and I go e7. Yeah, two through, yeah. It's just too hmm. strong, yeah, the pawns. Um, maybe other things, but this is what I saw on the board, like good enough. So queen c3 here was interesting. And now I, I played rook e3. e3. Uh, h3 is hanging. So he went queen b2. The point hmm. is like here I have two options, right? I'm a little low on time. I could have just, I feel like, the best way to continue here was rookie 2 in retrospect because um, I mean I I would not want my rook on b1 because then it's just pinned here yeah so if I just go rookie 2 and for example if you go queen a1 and now I just continue with my idea of d4 of e5 mm -hmm. oh this looks good hmm. yeah I mean it, so what to do for him then queen c3 go back so queen c3 then just I mean at least I can just repeat I'm not really yeah, sure if there's uh, something uh, better for me but I had this option and 
I don't know. I, I felt I like I wonder if you can give him the H3 porn and go E5. You know, I was considering that, honestly, and I think it's a very interesting idea, but... Uh, it does seem know. risky, but... Also, the other thing that I was slightly worried about was C5 here. Yeah? Ah, because of the hanging bishop, yes. So, yeah, and after C5... Um, oh, I no, sorry. Also... Uh, rook a1 is a threat. Oh yeah, rook a1, yes. So yeah. you can't, uh, I can't really do that. I have to, no, have I to, have to have attack to the queen, attacking. yeah. Or, you or rook b3. Take the rook to b3. I just got excited, honestly. But yeah. I don't think it's so accurate. A, I have short time. It's, uh, you know, that position is so easy to blunder in. And, and black is getting enough count to play in that. We are moved 27. And yeah, it's uh, did you like have about, about 10, 10 minutes? minutes at this point. So it's uh, yeah. it's 13 moves to make in a very important uh, position. So I think practically rookie two just made so much sense because um, the point is the moment you leave the a1 square, I go e5. Hmm. And now again, I'm, I'm happy with my position. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, no, he, he, he has to come back to, yeah. to c3. I mean. Yeah, probably because uh, queen a1. Just you push the pawn and yes. there's no threat so exactly also what's interesting is that yeah after queen c3 yeah just maybe just rookie three is is the best i'll have to i'll have to check but i, I was thinking about this and i just got sort of excited with this idea uh, maybe you have rook a2 but i don't think so yeah i was i was considering that but um seems a bit strange no, it's actually quite interesting and it does make a lot of sense. I mean, you know, this rook is always annoying you on the A-file, just get rid of his strongest piece, mm. actually. So from that point of view, it makes perfect sense. But you have to sack the H3 pawns, you play E5. You yeah. don't have so many pieces now, so it's a bit more risky. But yeah, rook A2, bishop A2, I mean... Um, take, take, take on H3. Yeah. Push, push the E5. Who yeah, this is very knows? difficult to evaluate the this thing position. Is, and, and with not much time, it's always a bit risky. But yes. Uh, but the thing is that when he went queen b2, because I was cons during the game, I was calculating queen a1 at this point. In my head, I just thought queen b2, rook b3, I get b7, hmm. he can't really go for this line. But he found a nice idea here, really. And uh, I think this is important in such positions to sort of find these concrete ideas, very practical uh, decisions by him, because also I'm short in time, so he's mm -hmm. kind of posing real threats. Mm -hmm and uh, forcing me to take time so i went rook b3 queen a1 uh sorry he he went yeah he went queen a1, queen a1. maybe rook b1 but the point is that that was never in my that was never my intention no, but your, your, your idea was going to be seven yes maybe for b4, right? because maybe it's the right move here but the point is that we, if ha I we haven't checked it by the way yeah so and if i want to do this i don't want to get my rook on this hmm. diagonal or just stopping my counterplay with e5 so that you know, but probably, yes, I have to take stock and understand that rook b7 is too dangerous because immediately after rook b7, I just, to be honest, I just miscalculated everything, which is why it's so important to play a little faster. He, he gave one line. I'm not sure if it's still here. Could you click here? Click down here just for a moment on here. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if position. he gave. I'm not sure. After rook takes b7, we can always check the live game. If rook b1. I'm not rugby one. I went rugby no, seven. No, you went sorry. Went rugby and now he went queen c three, right? Queen c three. This one I'm not sure. We can check the right. We can check the the live game. Yeah, because queen c three runs into rugby three, so it's just a moment wasn't. here. We can check it oh, he went c five. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay. I've got this. So okay, c five. Yes. Yeah, I'll just. Can I just shut this off? No, don't, no, don't, uh, don't no. Just carry on here. Okay, so I, he went c five, which is correct because if you go, I mean, if you go, um, sorry here. Yeah, if you go queen c3, I just come back. So c5 is is the correct move. And this was obviously very important. Rook, Rook d2, d2, queen c3. Okay. And now it's just there are so many threats in this position. I mean, he's got these ideas with taking my bishop. He's threatening rook a1 at some point. The e4 pawn is hanging. The h3 pawn yeah. is hanging. Just the whole position feels very loose. And to mm. not have enough time in this mid at this moment is asking for a lot yeah. of trouble. Mm. Um, and I think I just collapsed here. I'm not I'm not sure but probably Bishop F1 but it just felt like I shouldn't be giving this pawn mm. you know but what was uh, what is interesting here is maybe a move like Bishop A2 makes a lot of sense you know now that I'm looking at it just simply because I'm stopping you from taking here yep. because of F7 threats I defend your threats against the A file but so yes I think I'm not sure if it was with Bishop A2 but he did give a line Taking on e4. Okay. Rook takes f7, right. and now just king h8. He gave a line like this. It's but I'm not sure yeah. 
if it was against this move. But it was very convincing that his king would just be safe. more or less safe. And I am still struggling. And exactly. And, but, but yeah, I, because queen h3 is a real threat. I, I, it might even be this line. But I do remember he was sac sacrificing the pawn f7. But uh, he wasn't completely sure either, but he was thinking of these, these no, it lines. No, makes, it makes sense because it's, uh, it's a difficult position. I think it's more difficult for white to play here yeah, than it is definitely. for black, you know? But, yeah. Because I'm not able to create threats against mm. your king and my king is quite weak already. Yeah. Which is why I think the, uh, the big mistake was this whole rook v3, rook v7 idea. Mm. Um, here, yeah. Because when you go over rook v3, you're not thinking of repeating. The repetition was before with the rook e2, rook e3. And that, that was probably the right way yeah. to play. Mm -hmm. Well, it's always something to learn from, yeah. from the game. No? Because after bishop f1, he just... Uh, I think it just the position... No, I, I didn't play bishop f1 here. I went for... But if you think you have, if you think you have a good position after rook takes b7, well, you have to play ambitiously. It's happened to me. It happens to everyone. Yeah. It's the thing is, I I knew that it's dangerous, hmm. but um, I was just very, just tempted to go for that line. But I don't think it was uh, it was the right decision because you have to have a feeling that just generally you're in more danger than black is hmm. because of your exposed king. And if you have that feeling and you don't have enough time, then you have to be a little yep. more pragmatic in chess. That's, yes, very that's, probably, that's probably right. Because otherwise you're just going to blunder in a position like this mm. if you're down to like five minutes to make ten moves, yeah. Okay. So I think that was, uh, yeah, that wasn't the best decision that I've taken. So here I, I went rook c2. He played queen h3, bishop f1. Bishop f mm -hmm. You know, now that I know the idea that happened because it was actually a very nice finish that he played with rook d6 later, I think he, even this, I'm just looking at it and it looks really strong. Um, yeah, no. because oh, if I just take queen d6, yeah. you just go rook a1. Yeah. He gave he gave this line as well. Oh, he did. So he, he was probably he thinking about like it. This, yes. Because I realized it. I mean, I realize it now. Uh, I didn't see this idea in the, uh, during the game. I thought I've kind of covered hmm. everything, but no, he gets in. He, I think he mentioned he could do it straight away. Yeah, and the point is that after queen d6, just rook a1, bishop f1. I'm not sure if black has anything better, but I think bishop b4 is game over. That, that, yes, this is the line he gave because he has the attack on the rook, and, and there was a couple of checks, but uh, again, it's just one ends. check. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's too many threats. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice a rook, but you're threatening mate, so that's strong enough. And um, yeah, and rook d6, and it's it's game over already. Yeah. Yeah, I can't keep the position together because um, yeah, it just falls apart. So, one more round tomorrow morning. Uh, yes. How are you enjoying your stay here in CGS? Um, to be honest, I'm, um, I'm really liking it. I mean, it's, uh, today was a tough game. It's a very nice tournament. It's a very strong event. Uh, it's, the weather's great. The organization is perfect. Um, I think yep. everybody's having a really hmm. good time. It would, I, I would have obviously felt better had today gone better. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> But the place is quite nice, and it's really beautiful. And yeah. also, it's uh, it's December, but you don't. Yeah. I almost feel like I'm in India with the weather. Well, it's we're, we're having a bit of luck. There's not much wind, so that's always, I love always it. nice. No, but it's, but it's Spain, so nice. The Mediterranean is quite nice in this in this time of the year. No, and just the whole atmosphere, the whole vibe of the tournament, the energy at the event, uh, the way it's been organized. Uh, I I would say it's one of the one of the nicest mm -hmm. open tournaments that I've played. You're also a, a professional commentator. Yes. I've seen you doing uh, things for the St. Louis. I saw you, th you were in London two weeks ago, no? I was. I, I did, did see one video with Maurice. I think uh, I saw you with Maurice yes. analyzing some games. Yes. So what was that like? Was it good? Was it, it was enjoyable? really it was really nice. I, I I have quite a long association with the London mm -hmm. Chess Classic. I've played there a couple of times. I also did the official commentary from St. Louis last year mm -hmm. for them. Uh, this year, I um, I was only able to make it for the last few games, so they called me over to do some okay. um, live commentary for okay. the live audience, mm -hmm. uh, which was a lot of fun. It's so also about uh, two hundred people. Uh, they have they have this really nice hall yeah. where they've got people sitting and mm -hmm. this live commentary going on, and then you've got the St. Louis set up as well on the oh, side. So it wow. was just uh, yeah, it was great. And, and generally, the classic is uh, is just mm -hmm. a really nice event to attend. You know, you've got this. It's like a celebration of chess because there's so much going yeah. on. You've got. The I went there four years ago, and it was unbelievable. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Chess all over the, all over the place. It's very nice. It's it's really nice, and I think uh, yeah, what Malcolm's done with his chess and schools program and just organizing the Grand Chess Tour event there, um, I I love being there as well. So. Well, we hope to see you more in Spain because it's I hope very to come back because here. this is. Did you brought the tournament also? I've actually played a lot in Spain. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I've um, I played Benasque. I've played Sort. Oh, Benasque is very nice as well. It's yes. so nice. Um, I made my first Grandmaster Norm in Sort, in fact. So and I sort, have some that, big memories. That was a tournament a few years ago. A long they time doing back. It. A, a long time wow, back. Wow, you played in Sort actually. I did. Wow. I did. Uh, and uh, so I've got some good memories here. And I'm really, I'm honestly, I I hope to be back. I mean, after seeing the way this tournament's organized, I just. I, I don't see why I won't come uh, back here. You have to come back here. It's great. <laughs> Tanya, thanks a lot for coming Thank by. Thank you so much. And if you do a nice game tomorrow or you feel like coming around, we'll be here waiting for you. All right, thanks. Thank you very much, Bye. Tanya. Tanya Sánchez, eh, maestra india, que nos ha venido aquí a explicar su partida contra Camrell. Y esperamos que mañana tenga una buena partida y, y, y también puede venir a comentarla. Gracias. Bye, Gracias. Bueno, vamos a continuar después de esta partida mm-hmm. con, con Tania. Y... Miraremos si sigue la ronda viva, que ya no debe quedar muchas partidas a estas horas ya. Vamos a mirar aquí. Cerramos, bueno. Fantástico, ¿no? Guapísima. Bien, habla muy bien. Además, nos ha explicado muy buenas. Muy buenas. Eh, muy buenas variantes, muy buenas líneas. Y a ver si mañana hace una buena partida y, y se acerca a comentar, ¿no? Eh, bueno, eh, la parte técnica pues ya habéis visto, muy rápida, muy muy concreta, muy ambiciosa en la partida. Sí que ha reconocido que seguramente cuando estaba mal de tiempo debía haber optado por, eh, por repetir las jugadas y hacer tablas, pero hay que aprender, hay que aprender sobre la marcha con estas cosas, ¿no? También así habéis podido practicar practicar vuestro inglés, ¿no? Y luego le he preguntado un poco sobre su tarea como comentarista y las diferentes cosas que hace. Y también si le gusta España y bueno, a veces se anima a venir a jugar más torneos. Curiosamente nos ha recordado, me ha recordado, yo, yo lo sabía, me había olvidado, que um, estuvo aquí años atrás jugando el torneo de Sort, que es un torneo que aquí en, en el Pirineo, de hecho Sort aquí en España, pues, supongo que todos conocéis, donde se vende toda la lotería. Y, y la verdad es que, es que, claro, cuando lo he dicho me he acordado que, que efectivamente muchos jugadores de la India vinieron a jugar ese torneo, ¿no? Así que, bueno, muy bien, ¿no? Y a ver si... Espero que se le haya pasado bien aquí. 